Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving deep into the captivity world of one of Canada's most renowned painters, Paul Kane. Get ready to be inspired by his extraordinary journey and artistic legacy. Did you know that you can find Paul Kane's incredible artwork at the Art Gallery of Ontario, also known as AGO, located in Toronto, Ontario, Canada? Now you know, Paul Kane's artwork is at the AGO, the address for the Art Gallery of Ontario is 317 Dundas Street West. It's truly a mesmerizing experience you won't want to miss. Born in Mallow County, Cork, Ireland, Paul King was the fifth child in a family of eight. His early years in Upper Canada, now Toronto, played a pivotal role in shaping his remarkable artistic career. King's artistic journey took him on an incredible adventure. From his humble beginnings at Upper Canada College to his extensive travels through the Canadian Northwest, his passion for capturing the essence of indigenous peoples and landscapes knew no bounds. Through meticulous sketches and over 100 oil paintings, Kane immortalized the customs and traditions of the indigenous people he encountered. His work deeply rooted in the principles of salvage ethnography serves as a powerful testament to his commitment to preserving their way of life. Kane's legacy continues to shine bright. His paintings showcased at the 1855 World Fair in Paris continue to receive praise for their unparalleled portrayal of life in the 19th century Northwest. In June 1845, Paul Kane embarked on a solo journey along the northern shores of Lake Huron, venturing to Saugeen territory. Despite intending to travel further west, John Ballantin, a local chief trader for the Hudson's Bay Company, advised Kane of the challenges of solo travel through the Western Territories. Kane returned to Toronto for the winter, transforming his field sketches into oil canvases. In spring, he sought support from the Hudson's Bay Company at Lachine, gaining passage on company canoes only as far as Lake Winnipeg. Over the next two years, Kane sketched extensively at the company's trading post, permanently settling in Toronto thereafter. Kane's exhibitions in 1848 and 1852 garnered significant success, catching the attention of influential figures like George William Allen, who commissioned numerous oil paintings when Kane's works were displayed at the World's Fair in Paris in 1855. His work was sent to Buckingham Palace for consideration by Queen Victoria in 1858. Despite his falling eyesight in the 1860s, Kane's legacy as one of Canada's pioneering artists endured. Kane's contributions were recognized posthumously with honors such as being declared a National Historic Person in 1937 and a commemorative postage stamp issued by Canada Post in 1971. His former residence, the Paul Kane House, was purchased by the City of Toronto in 1978 and designated a heritage structure which is located at 56 Wellesley Street East in downtown Toronto. Today, landmarks like Paul Kane High School in St. Albert, Alberta and a park in Oliver neighborhood of Edmonton honor his memory and contributions to Canadian art and culture. Let me speak about several of Paul Kane's artwork in this video that are famous and comes with Canadian history in Canada. For example, this artwork is called Flathead Woman and Child. The painting portrays a woman cradling an infant whose head is being shaped, showcasing the outcome of the traditional practice inspired by Paul Kane's interactions with indigenous communities in the Columbia River Valley. The artwork is a blend of watercolor sketches depicting members from different tribes, including the Kaolis for the infant and the Songhees or Southern Coast Salish for the woman. Flathead Woman and Child serves as a fusion of aesthetic and ethnographic elements, capturing the cultural practice of the indigenous people encountered by Cain during his travel. The significance of Flathead Woman and Child extended beyond Cain's original painting, influencing the work of his friend Daniel Wilson, who referenced it in his review of Kane's book, Wanderings of an Artist. Indian Encampment on Lake Huron is a significant artwork by Paul Kane, 
a renowned Kenyan painter known for his depictions of indigenous people and their ways of life during the 19th century. This particular painting captures a scene of indigenous encampment along the shores of Lake Huron, showcasing the daily life and activities of the people living in the region. In the painting, Kane offers a glimpse into the traditional lifestyle of the indigenous communities, portraying elements such as teepees, tasks like cooking, fishing, or socializing. The artwork provides valuable insights into the culture, customs, and environment of indigenous people inhabiting the Lake Huron area during Kane's travels. Indian encampment on Lake Huron is significant not only for its artistic merit but also for its historical and ethnographic value. Through his paintings, Kane sought to document and preserve the vanishing way of life of indigenous people as European settlers encroach upon their lands. The painting serves as a visual record of indigenous history and culture during a period of significant change and upheaval. Overall, Indian encampment on Lake Huron stands as a testament in, to King's dedication to capturing the essence of indigenous life in his work, artwork, contributing to our understanding and appreciation of Canada's rich cultural heritage. Paul King's artwork, Mount St. Ellen's Corrupting at Night, captures a dramatic and are we inspiring moment in nature's fury. This painting depicts the eruption of Mount St. Allen's, a volcanic peak located in the Cascade Range of Washington State, United States. The eruption of Mount St. Allen's on May 18, 1980 was one of the most significant volcanic events in the recent history of the United States. It resulted in a massive explosion that devastated the surrounding landscape, causing widespread destruction and loss of life. The eruption sent plumes of ash, smoke, and volcanic debris high into the air, creating a spectacle of destruction and chaos. In his painting, Kane likely aimed to capture the sheer power and magnitude of the volcanic eruption. He may have been inspired by eyewitness accounts, photographs, or other depictions of the event. Through his artwork, Kane provides viewers with a visceral experience of the eruption, conveying the intensity and impact of the natural disaster. Mount St. Allen's erupting serves as a testament to the forces of nature and the fragility of human existence in the face of such cataclysmic events. It also underscores King's ability to capture dramatic moments in history and translate them into compelling visual narratives. Overall, Mount St. Allen's erupting is a powerful and evocative artwork that serves as a reminder of the Earth's awesome power and the importance of respecting and understanding the forces of nature. The Death of Big Snake is a significant artwork by Paul King depicting a poignant moment in indigenous history and culture. In this painting, King portrays the death of Omuk Sisisani, known as Big Snake, a prominent Ijibwe chief, meaning Blackfoot chief, during a battle or conflict. The scene captures the solemnity and gravity of the moment as Big Snake lies on the ground surrounded by fellow warriors and members of his community. The figures in the painting convey a sense of mourning and reverence, reflecting the respect and honor accorded to Big Snake in its final moments. Through his artwork, Kane offers a glimpse into the realities of indigenous life and the complex relationships between indigenous people and the European settlers during the 19th century. The painting serves as a visual record of indigenous history and traditions, highlighting the resilience, bravery, and dignity of indigenous communities in the face of adversity. The death of Big Snake is also a significant for its role in preserving indigenous cultural heritage and storytelling. Kane's depiction of this momentous event provides valuable insights into indigenous perspectives and experiences, contributing to a broader understanding of indigenous history and identity. Overall, the death of Big Snake is a powerful and thought-provoking artwork that continues to resonate with viewers today, prompting reflection of themes of loss, resilience, and cultural heritage. A scene born hunting buffalo is a notable artwork by Paul Kane, depicting a scene of indigenous hunters 
from the Asini Barn tribe pursuing buffalo on the Great Plains. In this painting, King captures the dynamism and intensity of the hunt, portraying the hunters on horseback wielding weapons as they chase after the buffalo herd. The painting offers a glimpse into the traditional hunting practice of the Asini Barn people, showcasing their skill, agility, and reliance on buffalo for sentience and survival. The buffalo depict in the background symbolize abundance and vitality serving as a central element of indigenous culture and livelihood. Through his artwork, King not only documents the hunting techniques and lifestyle of the Asini Buan tribe, but also highlights the interconnectedness between indigenous people and the natural world. The painting reflects indigenous perspectives on the land, wildlife, and the importance of maintaining balance and harmony with nature. A Buan hunting buffalo is significant for its role in preserving indigenous traditions and cultural heritage. King's realistic portrayal of the hunt provides valuable insights into indigenous life on the Great Plains during the 19th century, contributing to a deeper understanding of indigenous history and identity. Overall, a Buan hunting buffalo is a compelling artwork that celebrates the resilience resourcefulness and cultural richness of the Sini Buan people while also highlighting the profound relationship between indigenous communities and the land. The surveyor portrait of Captain John Henry Lefroy is a significant artwork by Paul Kane depicting the portrait of Captain John Henry Lefroy, a prominent figure in Canadian exploration and surveying during the 19th century. In this painting, Kane captures the likeness of Lefoy with remarkable detail and realism, portraying him in a dignified and authoritative manner. Captain John Henry Lefoy was a British military officer and geophysicist who conducted extensive surveying expeditions in Canada, particularly in the western regions. He played a crucial role in mapping and exploring the Canadian wilderness, contributing to the understanding of Canada's geography and natural resources. In the surveyor, Kane portrays Lefoy wearing a uniform of a British officer emphasizing his military background and official role as a surveyor. Lefoy's expressions reflect a sense of determination and purpose, highlighting his commitment to his work and the challenges he faced in the rugged Canadian terrain. To his portrayal of Lefoy, Kane celebrates the achievements and contributions of individuals like Lefoy who play instrumental roles in the exploration and development of Canada. The painting serves as a tribute to Lefoy's dedication to scientific inquiry and his pioneering efforts in advancing knowledge of the Canadian landscape. The surveyor portrait of Captain John Henry Lefoy is not only a portrait of a distinguished individual but also a representation of the broader themes of exploration, discovery, and the quest for knowledge that characterized the 19th century colonial era in Canada. It stands as a testament to the important role of surveyors and explorers in shaping Canada's history and identity. The Cameron Winnipeg River is a notable artwork by Paul King showcasing a scene of indigenous encampment along the Winnipeg River in Canada. Painted during King's travels through the Canadian Northwest in the mid-19th century, this artwork offers a glimpse into the daily life and culture of indigenous people during that time. In the painting, King depicts a group of indigenous individuals gathered around a campfire engaged in various activities such as cooking, storytelling, and socializing. The scene is rich in detail, capturing the intricate clothing, accessories, and tools used by the indigenous people. The lush natural surroundings of the Winnipeg River provide a picturesque backdrop to the encampment, emphasizing the close connection between indigenous communities and the land. Through encampment, Winnipeg River Cane offers viewers a window into the traditional way of life of indigenous people in Canada before the significant impact of European colonization. The painting serves as a documentation of indigenous culture and customs preserving the heritage for future generations to appreciate and understand. Additionally, Encampment Winnipeg River reflects King's artistic skill and his ability to capture the essence of his subjects 
with sensitivity and authenticity, his use of light, color, and composition brings the scene to life, evoking a sense of warmth and intimacy that invites viewers to immerse themselves in the moment. Overall, Encampment Winnipeg River is not only a stunning work of art, but also a valuable historical record that contributes to our understanding of Indigenous history and culture in Canada. It serves as a reminder of the resilience and strength of Indigenous communities in the face of significant social and environmental changes. As we reflect on the life and artistry of Paul King, let's honor his contributions to Canadian art and in preserving the rich tapestry of Indigenous culture.
Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivity explorations of art and culture. Until next time, keep exploring. Bye for now.